Hello brothers and sisters, this is Lena and I wanted to share a dream that I had. I am not really good at this. I am usually the YouTube watcher, not the YouTube poster. I am like Moses. I am my speech is not the best. I've never had good communication skills, but the Lord impressed upon me a dream about hell that I feel I need to share because I have prayed for God to use me and to give me the opportunity to witness and with this dream I feel that I need to share it because it's 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 not it wasn't an ordinary dream I kind of feel uncomfortable ca about calling it a dream because it was very real very vivid and I can remember it in full detail. With most dreams, you cannot. They become a figment of your imagination. But this one I still remember because it had a, a lasting impact and still has a lasting impact. But about the dream, it started out in a, a building, a tall building with many, many floors. I could tell it was many floors. I was up high. And it was in a very, very spooky part of town this building was and I'm inside this building and down this hallway and I know I am in the worst part of town possible because it feels that way and also it feels very evil and demonic I would say creepy but no it's there's a sure sense of demonic energy within this building and I'm in the hallway and I'm in front of a window the best the best way I can describe I can describe this window is if you watch Law and Order, you know they have the interrogation rooms and there are, you have the characters standing outside the interrogation room looking inside that window that on in on the inside no one can, can really see anybody on the outside but on the outside you can look in. And that's kind of what it was. I was in front of this window looking inside a room and there was like a little black light like there usually is on the, on the episodes, a little hanging light above the table and chairs and it was the exact hanging light the only light in the room shining and the, the room was pitch black inside with the little dangling light fixture above it but there was a slab and on this slab was the dead body of Whitney Houston she had OD'd on drugs and she was dead she was very dead lying very horrifically on this on this slab and a side note I am I know the the overall knowledge is she she OD she drowned in her tub but I know there are also stories that she was murdered and she was beaten and it has nothing to do with neither here nor there I just want to make that known that I am aware of that but in my dream she had OD'd on drugs and was very dead now to me I was like this is nothing new she's been dead for quite a while and I didn't really think anything of it it didn't phase me for some reason I looked this way because I'm out in the hallway and I looked down the hall and all of a sudden my cousin appears up and she's looking inside the room through the window and she just dashes right in the room now all the while, while my head is turning towards the direction she's dashing, which is going in the room, I look back in the room and Whitney Houston's dead body is gone. It's now my mother lying in her place, dead as a doornail. And a doorknob, sorry. But anyway, she's she's dead, she's OD'd, and lying right alongside her is my five-year-old daughter who has also OD'd. My mother gave my daughter drugs and they both died. They both OD'd and it was the most horrific sight and image you could ever as a parent ever see. My five-year-old is dead of drugs. She OD'd on drugs. So I'm in shock to say the least, I'm I'm I, I'm like, I probably thought what was Whitney Houston for like a millisecond before the 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 sight of my dead daughter 
took over. And my cousin was in the room. She didn't really pay any attention to my mom. She was all focused on my daughter. And she kept examining her. And she trying to figure out, without even touching her, just looking her over, you know. It, and she said, I think she's still alive. And that kind of got me out of my shock on the outside, out in the hallway. And I started to dash inside the room. When I got in there, my cousin had vanished. She was not in there, but I immediately went and grabbed my daughter up. Now, when I grabbed my daughter up, the presence of sheer darkness and evil consumed my body. I mean, it was like, I can describe it as, you know when you're out on the beach and there's like a six, seven, eight foot wave that's about to come and engulf you. That's, that's kind of what it was like for me with the presence of fear. It kind of engulfs me like a wave, but it didn't crash down like a wave does on the beach. It, it just stayed over me and hovered over me. And everywhere I went, it went. It just engulfed my whole embody. And I ran out the room, got so far as the hallway, and then I stopped. Because the presence of this evil was crippling. It was very, I can't even explain it because it's not of this world. I could say horrific, terrifying. And I can use any English American vocabulary, but there is no vocabulary that can that can give this this presence of evil and darkness justice. I cannot. It's it's a it's a fear and a darkness and an evil out of this world, out of our realm, out of our comprehension. So I cannot even use a word in this world that we know of in in the English vocabulary to actually give it justice. And this evil presence that was that was over me was it was very powerful and it it felt it felt very demonic and dark and I'm using words that are not really even giving it justice because I don't I don't know I wish I could say a word that could tell you exactly what I'm talking about as far as this presence of evil but I cannot I can use terrifying hor horrifying and all that but it's it's it makes those words you know fail to comparison i'm holding my baby while i am consumed with fear and evil not fear but darkness and evil all around me and while i'm holding my baby the lower her lower back there's a uh, is swelling there's a big bump that's forming i mean she's She's decaying at a grotesque rate <laughs> as I'm holding her. And all of a sudden, this big mass that forms into a bubble on her back, it explodes. And then I feel like her lower waist is now deflating, like a balloon deflating. Like she has it. It has rotted away and it's, it has blew up and has rotted away her lower waist and there's nothing there. It has deflated to nothingness while I'm still holding her. And not even that, not even the fact that she has OD, my mother has killed her. She's dead in my arms and her the, lo the lower waist of her body is now a mush, mushness. It doesn't even phase or affect me because the presence of this evil and this darkness that's all around me is greater by far. Than that I am more crippled and handicapped to this this presence of evil and darkness than I am the fact that my daughter is dead, OD'd, and probably doesn't have a lower waist. And I can't really even move because the evil and darkness is telling me it is hopeless. There's no need for you to do anything, go anywhere, think anything. It's hopelessness. So I can't move because if I feel if I move an inch, the evil and darkness is going to intensify and make the feeling of total dread and fear and, 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 and horror even worse upon me. I mean, it is, 
in this life we know darkness we can you know go into a room close the door with the lights out and run dark and ooh, it's scary or we can go to a haunted house and get scared beyond our wits this this is nothing this life is the life that we live and the tragic that we go through is nothing compared to the evil and darkness that was over me. I don't mean to be graphic and I don't mean to be, you know, blunt, but if you're a parent and you have a three year old, you could actually, well, not you literally, but your kid could get decapitated. Someone could decapitate your, your child's head off right in front of you. And as a parent, you think. You, you would you would be beyond horrified, mortified, the trauma alone. But I'm telling you, even seeing that, if you're a three year old, five year old, if somebody decapitated your your child, it would not even phase you in the realm that I was in in this evil and darkness. This this. This evil that was upon me is telling me that I am greater and bigger and better than life's little tragedies. And it is to the 120th power, which I don't know even know if that even exists. But it's the evil not of this world. I mean, life has its tragedies, but there is something beyond it that is a hundred times worse than the life we live. I mean, as a mother holding my baby, she's OD'd, I couldn't even be phased by it. I could not. There was a, there was such such sense of evil and darkness and hopelessness to the full degree. It was. And I felt there was no there was no even there was not a time Within it, I'm like, this is never going away. My only bet is for it to not get worse or intensify the presence of this evil. It is never ending, and it is sheer hopelessness across the board. And before I woke, a voice said to me, this is hell. And I woke up just like that. And I woke up in bed for five minutes still in the presence of evil and darkness all around me i mean i thought that night was the night i was going to see jesus i thought i'm going to see jesus before the rapture because he's going to come and save me he's going to you know he's going to come and get me out of this 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 feeling of evil and darkness i'm going to see him i'm going to see him five minutes i called out for jesus and he never came of course he was always there he was there, but he allowed me to go through it. And I was terrified when I woke up. I was so extremely terrified when I woke up. I mean, I, for five minutes, I was calling out, calling out. I was glorifying him. I was thanking him. I was asking for forgiveness. I said a lot of mumbo jumbo and worship to God because I knew if I just caught out, caught out on him, he would come and save me. From this evil and presence, this from this evil presence that was all over me, and of course, then again, it's like two or three in in the morning. I'm I'm really tired. I want to go back to sleep, but I'm not trying to go back to sleep. You know, I don't need a sequel to that. But eventually, I went back to sleep. That in you know, I actually did have another nightmare that I can't think of think of. So that's why it's not this you know neither here nor there. Wake up, go to work, cause I, you know, I, I work for the post office. Um, a male woman, a male man. <laughs> I always have to say woman, but the whole entire day, I felt something bad was going to happen, like very, very strongly. I couldn't shake it, and I, I'm not the person because I'm a Christian. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't stress. I give that to the Lord, but. For some reason, I couldn't shake this this feeling that something that's bad is going to happen to me. Like any moment, I'm I don't know if I'm gonna die, I'm gonna wreck, someone's gonna you know run into me. Something bad is going to happen, and it gets it's getting to the point where I am losing breath. I can't 
breathe. I'm starting to... And it took me a while to realize after I called my husband and told him what was going on. Because I haven't told him the dream I had, you know, last night. And it took me a while to realize that I could possibly be having a panic attack. Panic attacks are not my bag. I don't have panic attacks. So I didn't really recognize it. But, you know, he's... Uh, He's familiar with them. It's a, it's a genetic thing in his family. So he's like, I think you're having a panic attack. And I'm like, I don't know. Am I having a panic attack? Because he had called earlier and he had uh, said something on the on the lines that he forgot to pay a bill. And I'm like, well, then maybe that's what I'm tripping on. But it's a telephone bill. I got my cell phone. <laughs> so, but it was, it was. And then he called, uh, and we had a conversation about our kids, something, you know, was going on there. But it wasn't that, you know, bad to where I should be, I should be really tripping, you know, I all day. And I run my route for like four to five and a half hours. So it was, it was bad. I was thinking any moment I'm about to die, something is, ter something terrible is going to happen to me. Something really, really bad. And I couldn't shake it. And I was praying constantly. But nothing was helping me. And it got to the point where I called my husband. Because I wasn't going to the doctor. I had made my mind up that I needed to go to church. And I called my husband. I was like, I'm I'm going to church after work. I'm going to have the pastor meet me there if he can't get there. Because I know my husband's like, well, what if, you're, what if the pastor can't see you at your church? I'm like, I don't care if he's in... Damascus, wherever Damascus, Damascus is on this map that I'm about to go, also go look for, I'm going to be there. Wherever he is, I'm going to go seek him out. And I get off of work, still having a panic attack, still thinking something horrible is going to happen at any moment. Never been through that before. So I call my pastor on the way to church because I'm not headed home. I'm on my way to church, and he was, and I was like. I need to see you right now. Can you meet me at church? And luckily, thankfully, he was like, I'm on my way there right now. He was like, I can meet you. And I was like, good. So when I got to church, I was a mess, a wreck, a worry wart. At, you know, I was, <laughs> it was not a good day that day. But I got to, you know, my pastor. I told him about my dream. He could see I was a, a shaky mess, I'm, I'm sure. He gave me his feedback of it, and we got together and prayed, and I embraced him so tight when, when we prayed together. And he prayed with me, and the moment I released myself from his embrace, my anxiety was gone like that. I mean, the, the feeling of something bad is going to happen, the nerves, the loss of breath, it was gone in an instant. Jesus took it away. You know, it was like it never happened. I walked into church a trembling mess, thinking I'm about to die at any moment. I was thinking maybe something in the church is going to kill me. I walked out of that door like none of those nerves ever existed throughout the whole day. It was completely amazing. And I give Jesus the honor and the glory because he is so awesome and he is so amazing but I think I went through that experience in regards to the dream to I prefer you know to get the sense of heaven than hell but okay Jesus I'll take it but I think that experience was put on me to share that hell is very real and it exists and I, I know we all might have different interpretations or comprehensions of hell, but from my experience, it is nothing that we can comprehend. It is far worse. It's far worse. You probably think you going to, you know, a person can go to hell or going to be dipped in a fire. No, hell is deep on the worst imaginable level you can think of. And I didn't dream visually of a hell. I didn't see no chains and dungeons and people torturing other people. I felt the 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 presence, the feeling of what people go through in hell. And the sheer hopelessness of it all. I mean, there is no comprehension. And I, you probably trying to 
relate mentally and comprehend everything I'm telling you but you don't you don't you you just will never you will never know the grimness of hell it's it's very real it's very it's beyond comprehension i mean tragedy tragedy and tragic that we that we face and that we go through is nothing on this earth hell is the grandfather the master the big dog of pain tragedy hurt hopelessness it is i mean i probably could face some fears now on this earth because i know what i've experienced in that dream is not, it's like makes fears on this earth you know a walk in the park hell is very real and I beg and urge of you to seek God and repent of your ways and turn to God because hell is not the alternative you want. It's not the acceptance you should be accepting. The cool people are not in hell. They're being tortured brutally, wishing they was in your position and wish they could have done it differently. I ask and I beg of you to seek Jesus. And if you think I am a loony Christian, then I ask you to just indulge me. Just take time out of your time and just talk to God. Explain to him how you, you know, things that, what's in your heart, how you feel, your doubts even, because he knows, he knows everything about you. Be real and honest and, and ask him to reveal himself. Challenge him to do that. Because I have no doubt that he will if you seek him wholeheartedly he will come because that's what he wants from all of us and i ask you to seek jesus before it is too late because hell is not where you want to be it is not and i pray that you will never go there because it is beyond everybody's comprehension of what they think they know about hell. Please seek Jesus. Please seek him. Get out of your pride. Get out of your, your, your stubbornness ways and find Jesus. Talk to him. Indulge him. At best, he will give you an answer. He will reveal himself to you. At worst, you just talk to yourself and I'm sure that's probably never happened before ever in your life. At worst, you could just be talking to yourself. But I believe if you wholeheartedly pray to Jesus, talk to him, seek him out, say, you know, Lord, reveal yourself to me, show yourself to me, because I don't believe any of this. And he will, if you, if you will open a door wholeheartedly. Because he put that dream upon me to tell you that hell is real and it exists. And if you keep on rejecting him, you keep on denying him, you keep on doing things your way, that is where you're going. And take it from me, you do not want to go there. Y'all be blessed, stay encouraged, seek Jesus. Bye-bye.